us to call it. We're not going to call it that. We're going to call it what it is. The Ballistic Engineered Armored Response Counterattack Truck. It is not a Bearcat. There's no rescue in Bearcat. That's all I'm going to say. Do not say Bearcat. Say Ballistic Engineered Armored Response Counterattack Truck. Got it? We are here in Concord on August 12th, 2013 um, to express our dismay and alarm at the City Council and the uh, City of Concord calling the Free State Project and its participants domestic terrorists. Um, participants here are obviously not very pro-Bearcat, -bear which is a armed vehicle, counter-attack vehicle, and um, they're here to dis you know, express the fact that they don't think police should be militarized. And I am here to speak on behalf of the Free State Project to help people understand that you cannot fraudulently make claims that we are domestic terrorists when, of course, we are a peaceful movement. Um, tonight, I'm hoping, best case scenario, they may even table it because the mayor is not here. He's on vacation. <laughs> you know, funny how that happened, huh? And, um, you know, hopefully we'll just get it tabled and that'll give them some time to amend it. Or a terrorist or a terrorist. We're friends. Would you like to be friends? Oh, I'll be friends. Oh, no, you can be friends. I'm my neighbor. What's going on? You showed up to the sign. I don't know anything about the name. We're here about the ballistic engineer. Won't you be my neighbor? JJ's my neighbor. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited to be here. I moved here 72 hours ago. My name is... My name is Amanda Billyrock, and this whole thing about being called a domestic terrorist reminds me so much of the opposites that were stated in 1984, the book 1984, do you remember? War is peace, ignorance is strength, and freedom is slavery. How opposite is it when the most peaceful people I know of are labeled terrorists. What is the definition of a terrorist? One who terrorizes. Who does that make the terrorists? Right? The people who want an assault tank to specifically single out peaceful people are terrorists. And the more we say that, the more we speak the truth, the more we label the terrorists as what we are, the better off we will be. <laughs> there are 200 people outside who have something to say about this and they were like well it's a really small I was like can we move it to another venue and they're like well no but uh, we'll rotate people in and out so I don't know <laughs> but what I want to do is go up and I want to hear if it's soundproof or not um, <laughs> so they're like you know maybe we just have a lot of chanting <laughs> I don't know if they can, but um
evening and welcome to the August City Council meeting at the City of Concord. Uh, the mayor happens to be away and I think he uh, had an interesting meeting. Uh, we're here to share. I'll have to talk to him about that when he gets back. <laughs> uh, I do want to start, before we start off, there are some people, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to suspend the rules and take one item before the Lenko Bearcat item. We're going to take the property acquisition at Portsmouth Street first. And I want to... I'm guessing there's only like a few people that want to talk about that. The problem is not all of them can, can get in right now to speak. So I guess what I'd ask is if some of you in the back would be able just to clear out to let them come in to speak and then you can come back in after that. But there are some people I'm told that are on the stairwell that can't get in that want to talk about uh, property acquisition. So if you do that, I'd appreciate it. One once, one twice. The public hearing's closed. Madam Clerk, if you could read the next item, please. I'm just, uh, yeah, actually, just for a point of information, uh, for those of you who haven't been here, what we do is we have all the public hearings first. We don't take a vote on anything until after all the public hearings are closed. So in case you're waiting, thinking we're going to take a vote on the land acquisition, that's not going to happen for a while. See, now people are leaving. Madam Clerk. Next item is a resolution accepting and appropriating $258,024 and unmatched grant funds from the Office of Domestic Preparedness, State Homeland Security Program, and Law Enforcement Terrorism Prevention Program, designated for the purchase, purpose of purchasing a specialized response rescue Mr. Manager. Members of the Council, Chief Duval has a presentation uh, that I'd like to make. Mayor Pro Tem, members of the Concord City Council, Mr. Manager, I have a brief presentation I'd like to go over prior to uh, 20 questions that you might have. Uh, this is as a result uh, that stemmed from an application last September when I came to the council and asked for permission to apply for uh, a federal grant through the Department of Homeland Security. To acquire a kid here. Who's always back. Right, right. Can you guys um, keep the noise down? That way we can hear the testimony. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, to apply for an application uh, to acquire a, an armored rescue vehicle, um, also known as a Bearcat, um, the application phase uh, was. Uh, ended in the end of January, and we received notification in the last couple of months that, uh, that, the, uh, that the City of Concord uh, was awarded the, the grant that we requested. Uh, this is going to give you a historical perspective, if you will, of the Concord Police Department's tactical unit and our association with the Central New Hampshire Special Operations Unit. Concord Police Department formed a tactical unit in the early 1990s. Um, it comprised of approximately 16 members of the Concord Police Department. These were police officers. Each member was issued equipment and received advanced tactical training back during that period of time. Over the years, there were rising costs of training, equipment, and also overtime became prohibitive because we had to keep a staff of 16 trained to respond to specialized police responses. In, in 2007, Concord Police Department joined a regional team 
also known as the Central New Hampshire Special Operations Unit. It's comprised of approximately 20 member communities in the Central New Hampshire region. Concord is the largest of the members. Our purpose, the Central New Hampshire Special Operations Unit serves to provide mutual aid law enforcement assistance, logistical support to the municipal, county, and applicable state agencies party to the agreement in high-risk situations, including drug raids, hostage rescue, barricaded subjects, search and rescue, or other situations requiring exceptional police action, which are beyond the normal resources and or capabilities of an individual police department. The team composition is as follows. We have leadership on the team comprised of a team commander, there are team leaders, and alternate team leaders. We have operators, which are essentially police officers from a variety of, of, of police departments that are trained to perform specific functions if they have to engage um, a, a particular crisis. We also have crisis negotiators on the team who are trained to try to defuse and, um, and to mitigate the, the, uh, the situation without any type of uh, forced action. We have medics on the team and we have two medical doctors on the team. The medics and the medical doctors are not armed and they perform essential functions if the need arises uh, to, uh, to rescue victims, to administer immediate medical attention, and to provide medical um, assistance for our police officers if lethal force is used upon them. We also have a communications expert. The Central New Hampshire Special Operations Unit has numerous assets including weapons, personal equipment, uh, communications capabilities, and vehicles. One of the vehicles that we have includes a 1981 United States Air Force surplus armored <coughs> This, these are pictures of the current asset that we now have. This is a peacekeeper. You'll notice that it's a, it's a square-like vehicle. It's armor-plated. It has portals on the side. And these are an angle views from, uh, from all four sides of the vehicle. These are two other photos of the same vehicle. The one on the top left is a view from the rear. And these are the access doors and then uh, the uh, photograph at the bottom shows what the inside of the vehicle looks like. And you'll notice that there's a bench seat on one side and there's also a bench seat on the other. It essentially allows uh, police officers to be transported uh, to a situation where a lethal force uh, may have been used, is likely to be used, or there's some sort of lethality component. The vehicle is 30 plus years old and is no longer reliable. The vehicle has served the Central New Hampshire Special Operations Unit for approximately 10 years. Recent mechanical problems have considerably diminished the reliability of the vehicle. Several costly repairs in recent months have, have occurred. It had to be towed by wrecker on the way to a call out several months ago. It never made it to the call. The timeliness of the grant opportunity positioned the member communities to acquire this critical piece of equipment. Concord Police Department applied for the grant as a member community on behalf of the Central New Hampshire Operations and the last slide here is a picture of the peacekeeper that we currently have and a picture, uh, a reasonable facsimile of those. The, the picture you see here uh, is not the exact vehicle we're getting, it's the Model G3, but the purpose of my showing this is to show you that it's essentially a similar type vehicle. It's designed to transport um, my staff and staff from other police departments and medical staff should the need arise and to uh, respond to any other types of uh, situations that uh, may be unpredictable uh, or, or lethal in nature. So that concludes my presentation. Uh, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you Thank might you. have. Are there any questions from the counselors? Councilor McCord? Thank you, Honor. Um, Chief, could you tell me how um, we purchased the original vehicle? The original vehicle was surplus. We actually received it from another police department who had uh, upgraded their vehicle for new technologies and it served, their, it served their needs better. And you said that was 10 years ago? Approximately, yes. I have another question. Yeah, go um, ahead. Um, how many, you, you said originally there were tw uh, 20 Concord police officers in the original team. 
approximately um, 16. 16. Yes. How many, um, tw sorry, 20 communities are now in the compact? Yes. And how many um, individuals? Uh, there's, there's approximately 20, 25 to 28. It, it, it fluctuates depending on retirements and attrition, but it's, uh, it's generally between 25 and 30 individuals that are on the team. And there's representation from every community? For most communities, there are. Uh, can you tell me how often the peacekeeper was used and a few examples of when it was used? I'd be happy to. It's important to note that the peacekeeper, as it's currently used, our current asset, doesn't deploy for normal patrol operations. And in order for it to be um, in order for it to respond as part of the Special Operations Unit, uh, certain conditions have to apply. And we have rules and bylaws that dictate when a member community makes a request for our team, certain conditions have to apply. It just can't be because, you know, a department, if you will, only has a few officers working and it would be really nice to have, you know, 16 or 18 people. Normally it has to be a barricaded subject, weapons, some sort of a lethality situation. Um, a hostage situation. Those are examples of when a member of the community can make a request. Some examples. Um, since 2007, um, I have a list of all the call-outs from the Central New Hampshire Operations Unit. And I'll just go down and I'll give you some examples of call-outs. First one, armed burglary shots fired at police officers. Second one, high-risk warrant service. Third, high-risk warrant service. Next, a delusional subject armed with a knife search warrant with drugs, search and rescue, barricaded armed subject, barricaded armed subject, barricaded armed subject, burglary with unsecured weapons in his home, homicide suspect in hotel, which was in concrete, search and rescue, high-risk warrant, high-risk warrant, riot at the Merrimack County Jail, high-risk warrant service, barricaded subject, armed subject at the high school. So those would be examples of when we would call, uh, we, would, we would call up the SOU, and typically when we would roll all our resources that would support the members that would show up on a, on a call order. Thank you. Councilor Grady Sexton. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Chief, do you, um, do you have the uh, estimates of how much we're paying um, currently annually for the peacekeeper in terms of repairs, costs of housing, and how much we would be um, required as a city to pay for um, the, the bear tax? Well, the, the, the motor was replaced in the Peacekeeper, our current asset, several years ago. Uh, but since then, it's been, in, it's been a state of disrepair. We've had to replace uh, not only tires, but mechanical components, and it's in the many thousands of dollars. This asset would be owned by the City of Concord because we made application. But the member of communities who, um, who provide resources to the SOU would be taking care of fuel, maintenance costs, insurance, and everything else, so the taxpayers of the city of Concord would not be exposed to anything uh, <coughs> financial uh, liability towards the vehicle. <coughs> well, thank you, Your Honor. And, and would we be responsible for um, training costs uh, for our officers in order to, to use the Bearcat? Is that an expense to the city? or? Um, the, the, the training for the vehicle is provided by the manufacturer, and uh, so not any, just anybody would be able to drive it. It's a very heavy vehicle. I mean, it's plated with armor, so you know, there's, certain, there's certain criteria for using that. Uh, but other than that, even besides the, the vehicle, we have our own training costs, but there would be no additional training costs for the vehicle. Thank you. That's incredible. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, when I was doing research with regards to our bear cat, I came across an article that Manchester is the community that donated the peacekeeper to us. Is that correct? It is correct. Can I have a follow-up? Yes. Um, my question is, is Manchester part of our SOU, part of our 20 communities that are in this group? No, Manchester has their own their own SWAT team for their city. So ours, ours encompasses an area of 1,000 square miles, over 150,000 citizens. Council Ledger, did you have a question? Uh, yes, I do. Um, isn't it true that if we did not accept this money for whatever reason, this federal money, that it would simply go uh, to another community for the same purpose? In other words, this federal money is specifically for this vehicle. Is that true? 
there are certain monies that are set aside for public safety. If the council chose not to accept the money, that money would then go back into that pool and there'd be other communities for other projects that would apply for and compete for that same amount of financial resource. Right. Thank you very much. Chancellor Keach. Thank you, Your um, Chief, do you see this vehicle as more of an offensive vehicle or a defensive vehicle? Or do you characterize it that way? The vehicle allows uh, police officers to get to a place to perform their tasks in exceptional situations and to do so with the as much safety as one can possibly um, prepare for. It is, it is defensive, it has no weapons on the vehicle, uh, and, it's, and it's not an offensive asset whatsoever. Follow up. Yeah. And I concur with that, because there's no mounted weapons, but it seems to, to me that it gets people in and out of danger and allows you to do what you need to do. So I, I just take its exception to the definition <coughs> it's a tank. I don't see it as a tank. I see it as a defensive piece of equipment. Would you agree with that? I, I would agree with that. In, in, in many ways, I would I would agree with that. Uh, I know it's been characterized as that, but it's not. I've heard that. Pass the car. Thank you. Uh, Chief, do you know what the specifications are for the, for the current Bearcat? What, what you're applying for as far as options? And yes, I do. Okay. I'd be happy to. Uh, the options uh, include a diesel 6.7 liter turbo engine. Uh, it's a G3 four wheel off road upgrade package, which, mean, which means um, the tires can run flat and still operate and get the officers where they need to be. It's a four door configuration, which means it has a driver's door, a passenger door, two doors in the rear. But what's different about this particular vehicle, it also has doors on the side. So it enhances the capabilities of rescue so you can approach it two different ways instead of just backing in and unloading or loading individuals from it. It has a radio prep package, which means radio communications. Uh, it's partially set up uh, once you get it. It has an intercom system inside and out. It has a front-mounted receiver with ram post and plate, a hydraulic ram upgrade, rear auxiliary air conditioner and heat, radiation detection package, and explosive gas detection package. That's it. That's it. Thank, Thank you. I have a couple more questions. Um, uh, we're a member of the Central New Hampshire SOU. Yes. You mentioned that um, that group is responsible for maintaining the vehicle. So what is Concord's commitment monetarily to the SOU? $3,000 a year. And how long has that been going on? Well, up until recently, it was 2,500, which was the uh, dues for several years. Uh, we recently increased it. Um, other teams in the state are up to $5,000. But having 20 communities contribute that way allows us to buy uh, vests, replace weapons, uh, ammunition, um, other types of uh, clothing items, repairs for vehicles, allows us to prepare for the future. Okay, thanks. So, um, you mentioned um, other communities with these vehicles. Could you talk a little bit about what other communities in New Hampshire have similar vehicles? Um, with me, I have Sergeant Mike Pearl, who could probably give you an exhaustive list. I believe it's a six or seven. I know Belknap County has, has a bear cash. Manchester Police Department. <coughs> New Hampshire. Um, the, the Southern New Hampshire Special Operations Unit, which is comprised of the Derry, uh, and surrounding towns. Uh, there's a Portsmouth team. Um, it's the Seacoast. Seacoast team. Seacoast team and uh, Nashua are also has to be Nashua. So uh, one more question then. Um, if we didn't have this vehicle, where, who would we call? How, how, if we needed one, where would we get it? Well, just a little over a year ago, Councilor McClure, um, we had an individual um, who um, barricaded himself on Hoyt Road here in Concord. And while our police officers were on the scene, unprotected, and basically Chevy and Paulus, three shots rang out of that house. Um, we did not have access to the peacekeeper for mechanical problems, so we called upon Belknap County, who, um, uh, who ultimately arrived at the scene and provided our, our SOU with some protection. But uh, they're the ones that we called and had a vehicle uh, within uh, 90 minutes or so. Thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
that, that was your response time. Four hours. Four hours. I'm sorry. Four hours. What would, uh, what would the response time be for for our unit, for the central administrative unit? Essentially, it would be immediate because I, um, by virtue of the size of my police department, I have assets, several lot, uh, I mean, human assets. We have more people, and uh, so they'd be able to just leave leave the police station essentially and, and respond uh, to the scene to make an assessment uh, while other members of the SOU are responding. So it would, it would be probably within 10 or 15 minutes at the most. What are some other surrounding towns that belong to the Central Lake Hampshire SOU? And the Sheriff's Department does, right? And other towns. Yeah. Allenstown, Ashland, Boswin, Bradford, Chichester, Concord, Enfield, Broughton, uh, Hanover, Averill, Hebron, Lincoln, Merrimack County Sheriff's Office, Pembroke, Pittsfield, Plymouth State University, Sugar Hill, Sutton, Tilton, and Waterville Valley. Um, and there have actually been a couple changes in additions and subtractions in the last since this application. So a couple of those may not be accurate. Those are examples of, these, of the member communities. Great. Um, Councilor Craig. Thank you. I was going to ask about the uh, timing, but it prompted another question. It's come to discussion that the state police has one of these, as well as the National Guard here in Concord. Is that a true statement or not true? Uh, the state police does not have a Bearcat, and I, I don't believe the National Guard has a Bearcat. So they have other vehicles that, I, I don't know what they have, but they don't, I don't believe they have a Bearcat. Thank you. Uh, I saw a lot of other hands up first. Thank you, Mark. Chief, my understanding there are 12 SWAT teams in the studio. Some of the vehicles and some of that. It's my understanding that Lebanon has a SWAT team, and they are without the vehicle, and they respond but if there's an issue that they don't believe that they can handle with the people that, that they have that they call the state of New Hampshire. The state of New Hampshire come to the city of Concord's aid if we call them. Yes, and we would go to their aid if they called us. Okay, I'm just saying that the state of New Hampshire would come. So I guess I would question if you call uh, Belknap County and you know, put them four hours, why don't we make a phone call to the state see if they can come soon? Certainly an option. Thank you. Councilor Grady Sexton. Chief, as you write down the list of all of the situations where um, the peacekeeper was necessary in this area, my mind unfortunately goes to the um, horrific and tragic events that happened in Greenland. I'm wondering if you know um, if they had a, a vehicle like this um, that they were able to use to, um, to enter that home or, or have that laid out. Well, they had, this vehicle ultimately responded to Greenland. I, I'm not in a position to offer any testimony as to the onset of what, the fact patterns that uh, evolved in the, in the early hours of the whole incident. I know that the Bearcat was used as a critical asset, uh, one, and in part to, uh, to remove the, the remains of the chief that had fallen so they could do so safely without leaving them out there for hours and hours. And the second part of the, the, you know, the component of this is a, is a rescue vehicle that I think is gone that is <coughs> least mentioned about this, where there are there are situations where a vehicle like this can be used to protect citizens. Uh, a year ago, Christmas in, in upstate New York, I believe firefighters were shot upon and killed, and a Bearcat was used in that situation to uh, arrest 30 citizens. Um, it's not a frequent thing, but uh, upstate New York isn't very far away, and we've seen other examples where um, we can hardly predict what's gonna happen. For the capital city, I felt uh, in my application for this that it was, uh, it was not only needed, but um, I didn't really have another option other than to protect my officers. Any other questions? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councilor Bennett sort of clarified it by, by referring to SWAT team. So I just wanted the clarification that the um, uh, the Special Operations Unit is essentially a SWAT team. I mean, that's, that's what, what is commonly known as a SWAT team. Well, a SWAT team is one component of, a, of, of what people think. I mean, ours is a Special Operations Unit. It has a SWAT component, absolutely. But it also has a search and rescue oh, okay. uh, a component, which 
they work as a team, again, not in a lethal situation, but they train if they're called upon in a member community to offer assistance. In, in fact, uh, we offered a mutual aid assistance in Stewartstown, uh, New Hampshire, when the, when the young teenager was found miss was missing and ultimately found murdered. Um, we sent officers from our SOU in a search and rescue uh, to help in, in the search up there. And it also, uh, we're, we're trained in, 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 uh, in, in, crowd, in crowd control as well. So it all depends on the situation. Um, that's why we're more of a special operations unit. SWAT is really kind of a technical barricade subject, likely to have lethal, a lethal outcome. Thank you. Any other questions? You know, um, I received a public call today. The event that occurred in Manchester, the murder of that child. Yes. People looking at, uh, I think it was MUR watching it on TV, it looked like it was a vehicle similar to what was proposed here at that site because it was an occupied, very public place. Was that was a vehicle like that used for? I anybody saw that. Know? I saw that video, Mr. Manager, and what, what you saw was the Manchester SWAT team or a response team or a component of the SWAT team arriving in their Bearcat, that's what you saw. 20 minutes down the road, we just had a murder. In the, right. And they have, that essentially allowed them to pull right up in front of the building and, uh, and deploy quickly. Thank you. Any other questions? Ambassador Brady Sexton. Thank you, Anna. One last question. Um, if this council were to um, reject uh, this application and not uh, uh, accept the federal funding, would you anticipate coming back and asking us to pay for um, a similar or a bear with, um, city funding in the future. Would you recommend that for well, I think what the benefit of this of this grant is that it allows many many communities to, to see the benefit of, of a resource that protects their officers and their citizens. I don't know that I would come as the, the city of Concord asking us the taxpayers here to underwrite an asset for all the other communities there would have to be a conversation about some financial participation. But because of our participation in the SOU, this is a precisely why grants like this were, were created, in my view, and how they benefit uh, the majority of the citizens. It's not really, um, you know, to, though, though Manchester doesn't participate in a, in a regional unit, their city is three times the size of their, their 140, 50,000 people, whatever their population is, we're 40, 42,000 people, and uh, but where it makes sense for us is again those other member uh, communities. <coughs> Any other questions at all? Uh, Chief, I, I think the grant you mentioned um, that, that we do have a national presence also because of uh, um, political campaigns, national campaigns that uh, come to the state and particularly to Concord and uh, the resources you're asked to provide from the Secret Service and other levels. And so that's another key to this thing, isn't it? It is key and it's uh, and it, there are a lot of layers even beyond that that I think folks may not even realize. I mean, the candidates, especially on the national level that come to the city, those are kind of known and they're advertised and they, they have a political interest, but we have a lot of other dignitaries that visit for a variety of reasons that aren't widely publicized, and that our department uh, is asked to provide um, uh, security on some level and resource, and uh, so those applications are even are, are even more widespread than just what people think of when they think of that. But to answer your question in short, yes. Thank you. Any other questions? Right. Thank you very much, Chief. Thank you. So before I open the public hearing, how many people here wish to testify but did not have the opportunity to sign up on a pink sheet of paper? A couple. Maybe five. No, no, I'm not calling you up. I'm just engaging. Um, there are about 150 people outside as well. Uh, could we go ask them? Uh, you're certainly welcome to let them know that they have the opportunity to testify. Okay. Uh, that makes the reason why I'm asking is because we obviously, you know, can't have each person speak for an hour. Uh, so I need to set a time limit to try to gauge how many people we have testify. If all 151 testify, that basically impacts how much time I'm going to give people. Right. Um, so, uh, actually, 
we public hearing's not open yet, but would you be willing to go outside if I called you first and ask them after you testify to give me an idea of where we're at? Sure. Okay. That's great. All right. Well, at this point, I obviously have more than 30 cars here, so uh, you can have two minutes apiece for looking at over an hour, just just for the people here, let alone twice that many people outside. So I'm going to set a rule if there's no objection from the council. Uh, under our council rules, we can limit testimony uh, and limit it to uh, one minute apiece. And, uh, uh, all right. All right. How about 90 a minute and a half? I mean, if it's two minutes, just with the cards here, let alone the people outside. That's way over an hour. Um, no, well, we're here to hear you. However, we have there are actually rules um, about how long this meeting can go. We actually have to suspend our own rules, and um, you know if it's beyond eleven o'clock, I believe no. Yes. Eleven o'clock. We have to wait, hold on. Got, let me answer sorry, sir, but the You're out of order. You've got a lot of time. That, we're minutes. not part of the public hearing. That's not part of the public hearing. Uh, but my point is this: I mean, we could certainly you know, hear from everybody, but obviously we won't be able to finish the public hearing. So, uh, you know, if people want to drive back at our next council meeting to testify, that's certainly a possibility. However, beyond that, we certainly have the opportunity to set some rules. So I think in fairness to everybody else that's here who wants to be able to testify, the person who testifies first, they're going to love it. The person that I don't get to is not going to enjoy driving back and not having the opportunity to speak to us. What I can do is provide a short, brief uh, few seconds after if you wish to come up a second time after everybody's had first time to testify. So now I am going to limit it to uh, one minute, and I'm going to give this lady a little bit more than that, actually, because if you come back and say nobody out there wants to testify, then I'll expand it. I'll, I'll expand it. I'll, one minute is short, I realize that. But if 150 people are going to testify at one minute apiece, we're here all night. There's, just so, you know, there's 10 other public hearings after this. Right, this isn't just okay, the public hearing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so at this point, I will open the public hearing. And, uh, <coughs> Thank you for being willing to listen to us. Um, my name is Carla Garrick, and I'm the president of the Free State Project. Um, my original testimony is about three minutes long. Well, we can put that as part of the record if you want. Okay. Um, yes, I will be handing in all the letters that I've shared with uh, um, City Manager and Chief Duvall. Um, I'd like to introduce those as well. So I will just, it's three minutes, I timed it, that's what we were told. <laughs> So um, I appreciate you giving me a little extra time. We the people are not the enemy. Free staters are productive people moving to New Hampshire because of the shared values with our neighbors of small government and more personal responsibility. We are not terrorists. John Duvall testified here tonight, in my opinion, in a perjurous manner because in his grant, he stated that free staters and occupiers and sovereign citizens are domestic terrorists, and that's the reason why he needs this tank. He did not mention, he said rescue vehicles several times, he did not mention that the grant application actually says that it is a tech vehicle for uh, CBRN, which is acronyms of military note that end with nuclear and explosion. It's not good. We do not, as he claimed, pose daily challenges to the city of Concord. We are here as residents of New Hampshire, and we are also here as taxpayers of this country. It's fine for him to sit here and to testify and to say, yeah, well, we wouldn't actually get the, we wouldn't get it, we don't need it that badly if we were spending our own money. But if we're spending someone else's money, hey, it's all good, let's take the money. That's not right. You know, we're, we're good people. In fact, I ran into Claudia Ryan, I volunteer for Concord Reads at the Concord Library here. So I am deeply offended that a grant application that has certain standards to it was used in a fraudulent and misleading manner. We are here today in great numbers, and there are 200 plus, maybe even 300 people here, to say that we are raising our voices to protest the manufactured false misleading, fraudulent, and secret claims made by the city manager 
and by John Duvall, the chief of police, in a federal grant application for a ballistic engineered armor response counterattack vehicle. As president of the Free State Project, I have publicly called for the retraction and amendment of the Department of Homeland Security grant. I also asked for a list of the daily challenges that we present. And lastly, I asked for a pu public letter of apology for the 14,600 Free State Project participants that were defamed in this application. None of these requests were met. In fact, people in this room didn't even respect me enough to write back to me. Chief Duvall, since then, has backpedal in public saying, oh yeah, you know what, they don't really present a domestic terrorist threat. I guess there's nothing like being caught out in a lie. I gave the city ample opportunity to do the right thing. They chose to do nothing, which means I will be filing a complaint, as several people have already done, with the Department of Homeland Security's Office of the Inspector General for fraud and political profiling. And I actually hereby call for the public resignation of the people involved with this. When ordinary people make misleading statements on government forms, there are severe consequences, including the possibility of imprisonment. State officials should be held to an even higher standard. Equally alarming to me is the fact that the chief of police of the state capitol admitted on NHPR that he needs an attack vehicle to quell free speech at the State House. You don't have to agree with our pro-freedom, pro-choice, pro-personal responsibility, and liber limited government ideas to see the irony of what's unfolding here today. The role of government, I'm sorry, it's, you, I've got two more paragraphs. It's been way over three minutes, it's been four minutes. You can have my time. I yield my time. I yield, I yield my, my time. time. I yield my Excellent. Time. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Just remember that when you're coming back up here. <laughs> you don't have to agree with our pro-freedom, pro-poise, pro-peace, pro-personal responsibility, and limited government ideas to see the irony of what's unfolding here today. The role of government, you, is to protect the people you allegedly serve, us. The government, you, want to bring an attack vehicle to a debate is not only a gross abuse of power, but it is unconstitutional and it is immoral. You have a binding duty to be open, accessible, accountable, and responsive to the people you serve. You have done none of these things. You have a choice right now. You as an individual can do the right thing for the greater community of New Hampshire and vote not to accept an attack vehicle into one of the safest and most peaceful communities in the country. I hope you will serve as well. Thank you very much. Please, if we could hold the applause, first of all, it's, it's not appropriate, and uh, second of all, it just adds a lot more time that you're taking away from your own testimony. So again, I'll say for a second time, please no applause or detracting blues, anything on the other side, I think. And uh, uh, would you be able to... Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, I'll go. Uh, Michael Little. Yeah, we'll go really quickly here. Uh, thank you very much for the minute, and I realize we're on time frame, but I just want to realize that uh, I spent 12 years where you are, and as far as I'm concerned, I would definitely vote to get this Bearcat. And I'll tell you why. Two reasons. One, I've been under fire. Two, I have used the tank, and I know what it looks like and how it operates. This is not a tank. This is a protective vehicle, number one. When I was in Cockpit at 16 years old, you had one cruiser, a 38 in your holster, and that was the only problem you had. In California, they had a bank robbery. The police showed up. 
the fellows had automatic weapons, fully automatic weapons and everything, and the police couldn't even respond. They had to go to a gun store and borrow the weapons in order to respond. You have no idea of the weapons that are out on the street today. And those weapons will be used against our police force, who, wherever they are and for whatever reason that they have to respond. So just keep that in mind when you vote on this. You're protecting the lives of the officers who've already sworn what they will do, and you're protecting the citizens. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, hold on a second, Mr. Little. Yes. We have some questions for you. Your Honor, I just if you could identify yourself and, and where you're from or where you live. Oh, uh, I'm Mike Little. I was born on Pillsbury Street. I lived on Broad Avenue, uh, Laurel Street, and Silk Farm Road, and I've lived here all my life. Thank you. Councilman, thank you. I just would ask the people to identify where they live in the city. I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, Pam Ian. <clears throat> Thank you, council members. My name is Pam Ian. I live at 296 Pleasant Street in Concord. I've been a resident here since 1996. As a former police officer, I find the militarization of the police over the past few years to be very disconcerting and disturbing. The city of Concord does not need this vehicle. The original intent of police departments was to protect and serve, and with this type of vehicle, it reinforces a sense of predatory government at work. Police officers swear to uphold the Constitution and their allegiance should be to that document <coughs> and not to the whims of government agencies. And unfortunately, I do not believe that many officers understand this distinction today. My second point is the federal government is in $17 trillion worth of debt Okay, I know that's a, a big number. It's hard to get your minds around. The more time that we say we're going to take free money from the federal government through grants or whatever is ruining the economic future of this country. And I've heard it said here today, well, if, if we don't take it, someone else will. It's the responsibility of local and municipal governments to set an example to our federal government, which has proven to be very irresponsible. And I will accept any questions. Councilor Kroenberg. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Next month, the City Council will be having a public hearing with regards to $46,000 to spend on swift water rescue equipment through Homeland Security. Should we also deny that grant? Where is the government getting, if the government is in debt, $17 trillion, would you please tell me where they're getting the money from? Are they printing it? Are they raising taxes? They don't have it. They're in debt. And I just don't think that the local governments should be contributing. I hear the same thing at the state house with the Medicaid money, that it's free money from them. They're going to pay for it. It's coming out of our tax money. And this, the federal government has proven that it is very irresponsible with money. And I don't think we should be contributing to it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Scott Hillier. Thank you, Your Honor, and I'll be brief. Good evening, counselors, Mr. Manager, Mr. Clerk. My name is Scott Hillier, and I serve as the Merrimack County Sheriff. Um, and my uh, point in being here tonight was just to give you a little bit, a very quick version. I talk fast anyway, but a quick version of how uh, the SOU was formed. I was part of the original, I was a police chief in the town of Northfield when a group of communities got together to, to form um, or to regionalize. And, and many of you probably know that, that the objective in what we're trying to do is, is regionalize. Since I've been your sheriff, I think the chief would tell you that uh, all the communities work very closely together. My concern here is, is this vehicle is not just for the city of Concord. Um, I'm a, a member of the SOU. We have 20 other communities that will be serviced by this vehicle. Uh, I understand the passions in the room. I respect everybody's opinion. Um, however, uh, this vehicle will also serve, you've heard a lot about police officers, but it serves to take citizens, uh, in, innocent citizens out of harm's way as well. It, it, is a, it is a tool like the fire chief who we saw here tonight uses a, a, a fire truck or a rescue truck. It is a tool in the toolbox that we have I understand that it looks uh, 
you know, rough, um, and probably the term peacekeeper would have been much nicer than the term uh, bearcat, but uh, if you're looking for the language, but it, it inherently, it services as Chief Duval told you, 150,000 citizens in Merrimack County, and I would ask you to support this request. It will not only benefit the city of Concord, it will benefit the citizens, 150,000 of those citizens, and I'd be uh, glad to take any questions. Thank you, Sheriff. Are there any questions from the council? I don't have a question, but I just want to take this opportunity to uh, thank uh, the sheriff for the work he does for the county. We're very fortunate to have you as our sheriff. Thank, thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm probably going to get you this last name. Carla Garrett, I can't remember. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. What town is she from? She did not write on her card. Uh, Christopher Grotsky, I believe it is. Thank you for this forum. My name is Christopher Grotsky. I live in Wolfboro, New Hampshire. Um, I'm concerned about the, um, uh, that was a great point about the, the budget of the federal government, which they're broke. They don't really have this money to give. Um, but the thing I'm concerned about is the um, the militarizing of, of a local police force. The Constitution says in Article, uh, the New Hampshire Constitution says that in Article uh, 25 that the um, standing armies are dangerous to liberty and ought not to be raised or kept up without the consent of the legislature. And I think that the more and more we have local um, law enforcement moving in a military fashion, we're going to be creating a standing army, and, we're, and they're all cooperating with each other, and we're going to be moving into a place in which it's going to be unhealthy for us, because the relationship with Homeland Security, which the USA Patriot Act is unconstitutional, it brings everything together. What you may not be considering is, with the grant, you're going to get all the regu federal regulations, and all the, you're going to bring the federal government into the state, and that's the, the harms the harm that will come to the people of uh, New Hampshire. So I'd, I'd like to, to not support this uh, this frame. Thank you, Mr. Grosky. Um, Kim Murdoch. Good evening. I will try to keep it really brief. Uh, in the event I miss anything, I do have copies for all of you and for Janice as well. My name is Kim Murdoch. I was born here. We're raising our kids here. I pay my taxes here, and I vote here, and I also own a business here. Tonight, though, I am here on behalf of the Concord Public Safety Foundation. The all-volunteer nonprofit Concord Public Safety Foundation was incorporated in May 2011 with a three-part mission to obtain and grant funding for public safety initiatives, to advocate for measures to strengthen public safety, and to assist with communicating public safety messaging. The Copper Public Safety Foundation's Board of Directors is aware, very aware, of the controversy around the specifics of the Bearcat grant application. Tonight's testimony is solely to ask for your support of public safety in our community by voting to accept grant funding for the acquisition of the Bearcat. The Public Safety Foundation supports the Bearcat requested by the Concord Police Department because it will be used to protect public safety staff, to protect citizens, and to remove injured people from legal scenarios. Um, certainly the Chief had mentioned the tragic uh, Christmas 2012 incident in upstate New York um, where firefighters were fired upon when they were responding. And in that situation, I understand approximately 30 um, residents were rescued. Also, on, on the issue of the acquisition of Bearcat turning the Concord Police Department into a military organization, I think that most residents weren't aware that it's been almost a decade that we've had a, a comparable, although very aged, um, vehicle in the Peacekeeper. It's 32 years old, it's been in Concord for almost 10 years, and in that time, I think um, folks would be hard-pressed to say that, that the Concord Police Department has turned into a military organization. So we're going to have to ask you to wrap up. Absolutely, we'll wrap up. So, 
Uh, again, on behalf of Stockton Public Safety Foundation, uh, whose mission includes advocacy for measures to strengthen public safety in this community, I ask you to protect our public safety uh, by accepting the grant funds. And we'll just say very, very quickly, personally, I've worked in the Congress Police Department um, on behalf of many nonprofits for well over five years and have always found them to be professional, to be attuned to community needs, and to be unwaveringly committed to public safety. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Representative J.R. Holt. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, briefly, may I actually show something on the screen? Yeah, if it's within your time, I'm going to figure your I don't know if you can. <coughs> I'll tell you what, how about we have somebody else testify while you're looking up? That'd be yeah. great. Okay. Um, Teresa Earl. Teresa Earl. My name is Teresa Earl. How should one respond when they're called a domestic terrorist? Yeah, I've heard Chief Duvall state that he used to, he chose his words poorly, but as the chief of police who filled out this application, I have to wonder if somebody who fills out an application which, with such disregard for the people that he's targeting in his application, whether he ought to be making decisions about how to use military weapons. As both an occupier, a free stater, and also a damn hippie, the last thing I would ever be referred to is a domestic terrorist. In fact, Occupy New Hampshire was told that we were too polite. So imagine my surprise when I read that I am considered a domestic terrorist, that my friends all throughout this room in both Occupy and the Free State Project are people who are just too scared to speak out, maybe because of this military industrial complex that we have running this country. We're all called terrorists. I've never even raised a fist to a person in my life. I would never do that. Yet here I stand, and today I get here. And suddenly, it's a rescue vehicle. This armored truck is a rescue vehicle all of a sudden. I would strongly suggest that rather than getting a grant for $300,000 to get a, a tank, that maybe you invest it in some community building, some violent, some nonviolent communication strategies, and some de-escalation techniques for your police officers. Because none of these people have ever posed a daily threat to the state, city or to the state yet we are constantly being targeted by it. That's all I have to say unless anybody has a question. Any questions? Council and I. Miss, where are you from? I'm, I live in Hennigar, New Hampshire, and I work in Concord. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Super percent do you still need more time? Okay. Can I speak from here? Is this from London? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> So, I apologize, Representative Pohl, Bowen Dunbar, I apologize um, for the lack of a presentation on the spot. Um, I want to talk about policy and police because the lady who, the chief who took over Washington, D.C., a very crime ridden facility, sorry, crime ridden city, took a very different approach than arming its officers with tanks, okay? She has turned the city around because she went after how do we get the police involved with the citizens, okay? The way to solve this problem is not to put tanks on the streets in the city of Concord, okay, but it's to get the officers in the streets involved with the citizens. I would politely ask that you turn down this application and start getting the, the chief and the other officers to get involved with the citizens in the city. Thank you very much. Well, Any questions? I do. I, could, you give me, could you give me a definition of a tank? Sure. Your definition of a tank. Yeah, in, in this case, it's an armored personnel carrier. Let's call the Bearcat what it is. It's an attack truck. Okay, it doesn't have tracks, okay, it has tires. But it's designed to withstand a 50 caliber bullet, okay, much like a tank would. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Uh, Representative Emily Sandley. Just so much, just like I do in my house. <laughs> my name's Emily Sandwade. I'd like to say hello to my fellow representatives, and I appreciate you hearing me tonight. During the last two years, I and a number of other free staters have handed out quite a few bags of food to people in Concord, people who have a very hard time making ends meet, 
And when you go in their, their apartments or their houses, their they're, they're cupboards are pretty bare. And what we've done over the last, the Free Stater community has done over the last two years, is make sure that for holidays, a lot of these people are fed. Uh, we try to be sensitive about what we give out to people. We try to, 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 to uh, pay attention to their dietary needs and things like that. So when we find out that we're being labeled domestic terrorists, and that we're, we're, people are using this as an excuse to militarize the police. It sounds like to me that it's a very good way for people on this council and for the police chief to say, no good deed goes unpunished. This military vehicle may be just a tool, but then our government also insists on calling drones and nuclear weapons tools. And that doesn't make them something that you necessarily want to use on your civilian population. You don't want to use it on a civilian population that's part of your community. And you don't want to use it on a civilian population that is nonviolent and peaceable. And yet that's what we're talking about. And so I think, thank you, sir. I think that at this point, that this application should be withdrawn because it, it, it's an application made under false pretenses. And it needs to be very clear that there's not a political motivation for acquiring this particular instrument. Thank you very much. Questions? Uh, I'm sorry, Representative, you have a question. Yes. Councilman Knight. Miss, where are you from? I'm sorry. Uh, where are you from, please? I'm from Manchester. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, question? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. One more question. Sure. <clears throat> I, I do understand. I just regret. Re, I mean, pretense by saying it's regrettable that the mm -hmm. three stairs were mentioned in the application, and I think that was a mistake. And I think that's been acknowledged. But my question to you is: Do you think there are circumstances within the city of Concord where this piece of equipment would be? You know, <coughs> Thank you. And, I, and as, a, as you think about that, as a follow-up, I ask that because. I see everyone out here has responded because your group has been singled out, and I understand why you feel singled out. I would be too. But do you think there's a legitimate use for that piece of equipment in Congress? Yes, sir, there is a legitimate use. If the United States was, was uh, say, invaded by some foreign power, I don't think that it would be unrealistic that the, that the police department trot that out and defend the U.S. But other than that, uh, it's a lot harder to see that, and it's much harder to see the use of military equipment against civilians. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Jim McConaughey. Uh, thank you. I'm Jim McConaughey, and I live in Concord's popular South End. And, uh, I really have a kind of single issue here. Uh, I'm glad Pam Ian brought up the federal deficit because uh, people's eyes, you know, glaze over sort of instantly. But um, it's true. Every time uh, the, Homeland, the, the Department of Homeland Security gives away one of these uh, bear cats, they add another quarter of a million dollars or so to the federal deficit. And if you care about that, you start doing something about it at this level. My main uh, issue with this uh, project is that it's part of this, what I would call this addiction to the federal handout. And this process that, that's in place that distorts your planning and your decision making and your setting of priorities. If the money is coming from some department of the federal government, then it doesn't need the kind of scrutiny that it would get if it came from the taxpayers in the city of Concord. And I think the chief made his own point here tonight that he would not come to you and ask you, the citizens of Concord, to pay $250,000 for this machine. So I think you need to build some kind of process into your decision making, this grant the, for swift water rescue and everything else that you get, so that you actually look at that money that's coming from the federal government as if it were your own money, as if it were coming out of the pockets of your own citizens. And I would like to see this council really take some leadership in this and to tell the people of the rest of the United States that we're not going to ask them to help pay 
or frankly, uh, a semi-military device which has about as much utility here, I think, as probably a nuclear submarine. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. The City of Nashua paid for theirs with drug seizure money. That would be acceptable? Well, I don't know. Is it their drug seizure money? <laughs> 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 important is something. You voted to buy a big conservation easement tonight that you spent years evaluating because you believed it was important to the citizens of the state. And that's the kind of thoughtful process that should go into any kind of spending of taxpayers' values. And that's not what you're doing with this with this bear cat machine. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the extra. Uh, we didn't vote on the property yet. <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, Irina Goddard. Irina, do you mind if they hook up a computer while you're just Thank you. Okay, my name is Irina Goddard, and for the record, I live at 15 Reddington Road in Concord. I come to you today with a unique perspective and a serious warning about what this bearcat vehicle represents and why we need to stop it now. As you can tell from my accent, I was not born in the United States. I was born in communist Czechoslovakia, and I went to school in a town called Ostrava. I have fond memories of this rather picturesque town picking cherries with my grandparents. In school, we would address all of our teachers by Sodrushka Uchitalka, which translates into comrade teacher. From our earliest school years, differentiation and creativity of any kind was discouraged. There was no freedom of speech, peaceful and skeptical discussion of government initiatives among citizens was brutally stopped. Government preached either through schools, law, or through law enforcement. This was all carefully and centrally controlled and manipulated from Moscow. The Soviet Union wanted to ensure that everyone in Russia, Ukraine, Poland, Romania, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, and other sovereign satellite countries was in line with the policies and initiatives of those in power. They bribed and encouraged all necessary, everything that's necessary to protect the people. Everyone had to adhere to powerful bureaucrats. We were told they knew best. We were told that it was for the general good. We now know the terror that was applied to those who were brave enough to question the Communist Party. I am deeply troubled that in America, in the sovereign state of New Hampshire, in the capital city of Concord, that a war is being waged on the First Amendment, the freedom of speech. Concord Police has explicitly stated this intent on the Bearcat application by identifying nonviolent but vocal groups that encourage, I'm sorry, that engage in peaceful and skeptical discussion about government initiatives. Concord Police is arguing that a military vehicle is needed to combat these nonviolent groups. I do want this deadly intimidation force of a military vehicle. I'm sorry, I do not want this deadly imitation force of military vehicles to suppress free speech. Very much like how it was done with tanks in communist Czechoslovakia. How far is this, is this from police asking for your papers from citizens gathering in the streets? Oh, I'm sorry, I meant to say, how far is it from the police asking for ID from citizens gathering in the streets? I have to ask you to wrap up. The Congo local government have approved this war on the First Amendment. How you ask by signing off on the application, by reading it thoughtfully. Specifically, Thomas Aspel, John Duval, Brian LeBrun. However, I must know that all of these positions Harry, are appointed. Harry, I see you're moving to page two. By your way Just one more line. Oh, sorry. Well, I have one thing to ask. Have you lived in a communist state? Well, I have. My grandparents. Um, thank you very much. I have a copy. Yeah, I have a question. Yes. And in Czechoslovakia, would you have been allowed to testify in front of No, you have not. 
Any other questions? Thank you very much. Okay, um, Representative Lambert. I'd like to thank you all for the opportunity to speak tonight. Like you all, um, I work in Congress. I'm a representative, I represent Hillsborough 44, um, the people of Manchester, the people of Richfield, and ultimately because of the communities that I'm on, I represent the people of the entire state. Like you, to be sworn into office, I raised my right hand and I took an oath, and that oath was to uphold and defend the Constitution of the state of New Hampshire and of the United States of America. Um, in front of the State House, where I get to work, there's a video on YouTube, and you can watch it at any time. It's a member of the Concord Police Department tasing a citizen who was out engaging in a discussion about his right to protest in New Hampshire, something referenced in your Bearcat application. And when he was leaving, he was detained and tased. Now, anybody who wants to determine whether or not you know, what that situation looks like, you should watch a video in full length and make a decision as to whether or not um, they have concerns about police, police being well-intentioned. But sometimes these situations appear a little out of control. You began your meeting tonight with the Pledge of Allegiance and you used the words, and to the republic for which it stands, that republic is the one that guarantees the right and safety of citizens. I spent six years as a selectman, and I understand the trade-offs of protecting our staff, protecting our citizens, and protecting the establishment of government. The thing that we never talk about is the way the people feel when the question comes up. What about us, and should we and do we feel safe? The Department of Homeland Security, for which you will have applied for a grant and will get it. I know, I'm almost done. Okay. Um, the Department of Homeland Security, for which you applied for this grant, has been noted for security theater. I encourage you all to take a look at the video, which is available on YouTube, I mean on Netflix, called Please Remove Your Shoes. I've offered copies of it to every member of the State House already and have copies for anyone who contacts me. However, it demonstrates how we as a nation over the last decade have begun to engage in security theater and to make it so that the people feel scared rather than the people feel safe. The people who are about to fund this grant, and I don't mean the public of the United States, manage an agency that makes sure that you feel safe every time you go to board an airplane. And during their own investigations, they removed a bottle of water from a bag that their own test team had a bomb in. They took out a bottle of water and they put a bomb in an airplane. We need to make sure we're measuring the right objectives, and that is that the people feel like the government is responding to them. Listen to the people who are here. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, Carl Appleby. Carl Appleby, Samantha Kleinberg, I'll make this quick. I have written testimony, but um, I'll just give it to you. Um, my name is Samantha Kleinberg. I'm a Concord Lifer. I was born in Concord Hospital. And, um, I don't take a personal offense to you calling free state a terrorist. I take a personal offense to you calling anybody a terrorist. I, I, I know you people didn't, but it's on the application. <clears throat> I know you're sick of it. You're going to hear it over and over again. Sorry, it's the application that you're approving. So it is what it is, and it's fraudulent. And if you vote for it, you're voting for a fraud. That's all. Um, real quick, if I were to apply for um, a federal subsidy for myself, such as maybe Santana for something, which I don't need, but if I were to apply for it and I embellish the application, I'm really, really very sure that I would be going to jail. Just to put it out there. Um, <clears throat> lastly, I just 
want to talk to you about integrity. And um, again, I'm a lifer, and <laughs> once upon a time, I thought the police were there to help me. I mean, rude awakening, that's all I have to say, is that uh, if our chief of police embellished an application, how are we supposed to believe that the department that he represents represents themselves in the courts honestly? It goes down, it trickles down. If your chief is not honest, why would his subordinates be honest? Why am I to believe that they have integrity in our courts and with people that they consider criminals? It's just a question. Thank you very much. Any other questions? And I'm sorry, I'm barefoot. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, Jesse Mertz. Jesse Mertz. Sandra Pierce. Uh, I think that's Pierre. I, I, I'm sorry, I, Pierre. I relinquished my time to the first speaker, Carla Garrick. Well, that's very nice of you to be honest. Thank you very much. Um, Craig Green. <coughs> I am uh, Craig Greenman. I live in 20 Maple Street in Concord. I moved here a couple of years ago from the New London area, and I really love Concord because of the community spirit that everyone has, the way that people participate in my neighborhood and, and helping the neighborhood run. And I think this is a bad idea, and it's for the simple reason the public safety is there to make people feel safe. And as you can see from the people gathered here, and we're not all free staters, I'm not a free stater. Um, we don't feel safe. Uh, we won't feel safe with this bear cat. You're making us feel less safe. And that's not the goal of public safety. Um, in my neighborhood, everyone I talk to, every single person is made afraid by this big thing, whatever we're going to call it. People with guns are inside of it, even if it has no guns on it. And it's not good to make people afraid. That's not a way to, to help community. Um, and so I ask you, uh, the very heartfelt, that if you can't vote against it this time, at least delay your vote and get some more input. Be, uh, have a little more thought go, well, I'm sure a lot of thoughts gone into it, but a little more discussion, if you could. Thank you. Thank you very much. So wait, uh, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Question. There's a question for you. Councilor Dodd, come on. Thank you, Arthur. Um, You saw the Chief's presentation. Yes. And the, the, two, the old vehicle and the new vehicle. Yes. I guess my question was, do you, were you feeling safe up until you saw this Bearcat, or because it was an armored vehicle before, so were you feeling unsafe with that one as well? Well, one really interesting thing about this entire phenomenon is it's revealed that we have an armored vehicle in Concord, and that's actually made my neighbors feel more unsafe. Now, let me, there's a difference. Uh, Saturday night I was in Bicentennial Square with some friends, and some uh, policemen bicycled through. And there's the usual, like, oh, oh policemen. Right? But then one of the person who was sitting there drinking said, no, no, they're okay. They come through on their beat. They walk their beat. And the difference between an armored vehicle and walking your beat is the difference between community policing and the military. I mean, not to push the term too far. And I think we've got to respect community policing and really advocate for that. And I think that's what a lot of folks are trying to do here. Thank you. Thank you. Paula Warby. Welcome. Hi, I'm Paula Worma, and I live in Moscow. That's okay. Oh. <laughs> Nobody gets it right. Um, I am against the Bearcat. I am affiliated with the Free State. I've lived in New Hampshire for 25 years. Uh, we were very excited when we voted to come to our state and help us out. Um, because I'm affiliated, I was deeply and personally offended. I do all of my shopping in college. And I come here pretty frequently, as you can imagine, we don't have a lot of retail in Boston. I feel a lot different about coming to Concord. I'm always looking out for police cars, and it's because I've been labeled a terrorist. I've never been anything like a terrorist. Uh, I was pulled over last time by a Concord policeman who said, your inspection sticker is expired. Um, there's no reason for this. The problem with the Bearcat again, is the application. If you approve this application for the barrier, <coughs> you are endorsing what was said in the application. I don't trust Mr. Duvall to properly use the Bearcat, since he has stated publicly on the exchange that he intended to use it for political protest. That is suppression of political speech. It is unconstitutional. 
Um, I also don't, I, I don't feel that he has the right idea, and because he lied, I, I worry about him being the person in charge of the crime this day. <coughs> Unfortunately, you know, I'm one of the communities that's going to have to pay for the upkeep, and I don't want to pay for the upkeep if Chief Duval is invo involved in deploying it in the area of the <coughs> This is the state capital. It is a free speech city. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? There is. Councilor Grady Sexton. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Um, Attorney Mormont, um, are you aware of any instances when uh, the 32-year-old uh, peacekeeper that we currently have in Concord has been used to violate any of the civil rights? No, I'm not. So why did the Chief say that? He needs to withdraw that application. He needs to resubmit it with whatever reasons he wants to use it. And if the federal government wants to approve it on that basis, that's fine. He doesn't have to manufacture domestic terrorists in order to get federal funds. I don't want the Bearcat personally. I don't think I'm going to be able to stop it. But certainly accepting it on the basis that we have potentially domestic terrorists in our state when there are a whole bunch of peace-loving people behind me, and, and many more that didn't come to the hearing, is wrong. It's absolutely wrong, and, you know, again, if the chief is willing to lie there, what is he willing to to do to get the vehicle in use? Who is he going to hurt? Thank you. Any other questions at all? Thank you very much. Uh, next up, we have, well, I've actually been skipping this card because there's no name on it, uh, but they're here representing humanity, so I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm here to run up to I represent humanity, and you want 90 seconds, so I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> that counts as part of your 90 seconds. That's all right, I ran over here. I heard this was going on, so I just need to get a quick drink. Thank you very much. What's your name, sir, where are you from? Humanity. Pete Martino from Epsom. Thank you. You don't need this. You really don't. I was a colonel. I'm a retired colonel in the Marine Corps. I saw a sign back there that said, we want more Mayberry and less Fallujah. And I spent a year in Fallujah. And you know what? When I first got there, I didn't have armored uh, Humvees. And I spent, uh, I traveled over 10,000 miles over there. And sometimes you got to deal with and go with what you have. And so that's part of the job, for one. The second thing is, though, when I was in Iraq, I was in charge, I was the Ministry of Defense Coordinator. My job was to man, train, and equip the Iraqi Army in Al-Anbar, Najaf, Karbala, and northern Babila provinces. And I can tell you right now, well, somebody had the great idea to get rid of the Iraqi Army, so when we rebuilt it, we did everything we could to make it as strong as possible. And I'll tell you right now, Homeland Security would kick their butts in a week. What's happening here is we're building a domestic military because it's unlawful or unconstitutional to use American troops on American soil. So what we're doing is we're building a military. My best friend, who's a SWAT officer in Nashua, who came to Iraq with me to train the Iraqi police, sent me an email with a picture of him in the media on the streets of Watertown, Mass, wearing the exact same combat gear that we had in Iraq, only it was a different color. And what, the way we do things in the military is called task organization. You take a command, and then you attach units to it in order to accomplish the mission. What's happening is Homeland Security is pre-staging gear, equipment, consistent. What they're trying to do is use standardized vehicles, standardized equipment. I saw a picture in the Boston Globe during the marathon bombing where there was a state police officer. Actually, there were two officers. They both had identical helmets flak jackets, weapons, everything I wore in Iraq, only it was all blue. The officer on one side had a big patch on his back that said Massachusetts State Police. Another officer next to him, his patch said Boston Police. And so what we're doing here, and let's not kid about it, we're building a domestic army and we're shrinking the military because the government is afraid of its own citizens. The last time more than 10 terrorists were in the same place at one time was September 11th, and all these vehicles in the world wouldn't have prevented it, nor would it have helped anybody. So I don't know where we're going to use this many vehicles and this many troops. Concord is just one little cog in the wheel. We're building an army over here, and I can't believe that people aren't seeing it. Is everybody blind? That's all. I'll take that.
please, I know you know it's a passionate issue, but if you could please, please, for the first time, I'm asking you uh, not to boo or clap one way or the other. I'll take any questions. Any questions? Thank my wife always told my kids there's always free cheese in the mouse trap. <laughs> <laughs>